fairy tale from an unexpected source, a mathematician who loved children. And that's how I'm introducing today's uh, Today in History. We're looking at what you know as Alice in Wonderland. It was originally presented as Alice Adventure Underground. Uh, that's um, uh, what we'll be talking about today. On this day, it was presented to the young lady Alex Lidl, um, who caught the fancy of mathematician Charles Dodson, uh, but he wrote under the alias of uh, Lewis Carroll, and uh, he got so much from this uh, work that he asked that his salary be reduced. That's the part that really got me cracking. I was like, yeah. not in this day and age <laughs> will anybody ask for a salary uh, to be reduced. But let's, let's give you a bit of a background now. So this work that we're talking about is one that is loved by children. I remember watching it as a child. I can't remember all the details now. I remember seeing her shrink and see her grow yes. and see her drop with all kinds of weird characters. And little little you rabbit. Know. Yeah. With a big clock. <laughs> um, it, it, I mean, it takes, it's a fantastic fairy tale, a tale that takes you away from, that wasn't necessarily created to uh, teach anything, but just to entertain and open up uh, the mind. A lot of reviews for it. Um, it's been translated uh, into 50 languages. It's been dramatized. It's been filmed from everyone to Disney. Okay, so it was on this day in 1862 that Oxford mathematician Charles Dugson sent, sent an, on, a handwritten, actually, a handwritten manuscript called Alice's Adventures Underground to 10-year-old Alice Liddell. Um, it was renamed in 1865 to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Now... The man that wrote this, his life is interesting. Interesting because of the seemingly uh, mundane nature of um, his day-to-day -day life. He yeah. never married. He lived with his unmarried sisters. His expenses, he, he spent his time going to cathedral. But from this unexpected source, you found this wild imagination spring forth. He is um, a professor at Oxford. And he wrote under the pen name, like I earlier mentioned, Lewis Carroll. He conjured the story of the self-assured young girl who tumbles through a rabbit hole into Wonderland. Now, um, he uh, let me give you a little bit more on some of his writings before he wrote um, Alice in Wonderland. He had an elementary treatise on determinants that's uh, <laughs> uh, from the mathematician side of him. Um, like I told you earlier, he spent his time um, looking at cathedrals. He never left Britain until just for once. He did it on a tour. Uh, now, the three children we're talking about was that of his uh, colleague, um, Edith, Lorena, and Alice. He visited, they, they visited and he took them out on a boat ride. You know, I, I, I read some of the story on the history a page, and it was beautiful to read. Words yeah. are beautiful, really. He, he obviously um, was a phenomenal character, and, and you know, it tells a, a whole lot, really, about the 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 personality of a lot of the greatest writers, you know, in history. Unfortunately, he died in 1898 of uh, pneumonia. Then, of yes. course, uh, there probably wasn't you know a good enough uh, healthcare at that time to to treat such. But um, Alice in Wonderland. Um, strikes a very, very emotional chord inside of me because it was one of the things that we grew up with as kids. Mm -hmm. I grew up with those kids. We had the VCR tape. I still, um, what I remember most is how then. it made me feel. I didn't remember the entire story, but well, I just remember this sense of, oh my gosh, what's going we, on? We grew up with it. Myself <laughs> and my siblings who grew up with Alice in Wonderland. We watched it more than a million times. Right. Um, they, they, um, you you do know the there's a sequel to it, right? Um, it was um, expanded and uh, he in 1865 actually um, renamed okay, i've already told you that it was published rather by macmillan and illustrated by john tenniel i'm actually reading uh, this for you it sold uh, over 160,000 copies enough to provide him a good living 
enough so much that he asked his employers um, not to, um, to reduce his salaries. Um, a sequel to Alice in Wonderland was Through the Looking Glass. It was published in 1871. Um, his other works didn't get so much of uh, attention as uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. And the beautiful part of this whole story for me is the unlikely source of this wild imagination. Oh, a mathematician. A mathematician who lived a very soft and easy life. Weird how the person who also introduced us to um, Alice in Wonderland was my father, um, who was also a mathematician, a professor of uh, maths and statistics. Wow. Um, and, you know, we, we had certain things growing up. We had certain comics that we grew up with. You know, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Rabbit, Jemima Poddle, Doc, uh, Tintin, um, Archie. You can't even remember the Oh, I remember all of them. <laughs> it, 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 it was a large part of our of right. our um, childhood, yes, Alice in Wonderland. And I remember the VCR tape um, was something that we really, really, really um, protected cherished. and cherished <laughs> you know, for a long time. It, it was a beautiful memory for us on this day. And a lot of children, even till date, look how long this uh, piece has been handwritten from a man who loved children, even though uh, he you, was you, more you, you of, of figures You mentioned person. he didn't have, you know, a lot more of um, successful stories, you know, but really... Uh, um, it's enough. Yeah, one is enough. <laughs> it's you know, enough. Um, Dido or Dido um, really just had that one album, and that yes, has been did. enough. J.K. Um, Rowling also really doesn't need to do a lot more in her life. She's done, um, you know, well enough with um, Harry Potter, and that, that's really enough. Yes, he, he, he was very religious. I must uh, put this out there. He was very religious, very quiet, and uh, he lived a very, like I said, quiet life. I mean, yeah. I admire him. Good All right. luck to them. Let's also, go on to the next uh, thing. Yeah, Unfortunately, I'm, I'm gonna... it's dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about this one because this happened here in Nigeria. Um, it was in uh, 2009, I believe, that uh, the a certain pharmacy um, had to be shut down. A, a manufacturing company had to be shut down after um, about 25 children were, were recorded to have died after taking a teeth in mixture discovered to contain a very harmful substance. The death um, um, figures eventually rose to about 80 across the country and it was uh, called My Pekin back then. It had to be stopped from circulation. About 3,000 bottles, I believe, um, or according to records, were already in the market and had been sold. Um, it led to the death of um, numerous um, young children across the country. NAFDAQ back then in 2009, headed by uh, Paul uh, or um, Ori. Uh, I think I it's actually Dora. Dora Cunha, Cunha, no, she stopped. She stepped down in uh, 2008. Eight. She was then Miss of Information um, um, from uh, 2008 to 2010. Uh, but, but anyway, um, <laughs> NAVDAQ basically had to step in at that time to ensure that it was shut down. But over time, you know, this has really created, you know, a lot of conversations concerning how well we've done with uh, proliferation of, uh, of uh, fake drugs in the market, how well we've done, we've been able to checkmate the, the uh, type of drugs that, you know, circulate the Nigerian space in general, um, how well NAVDAQ has done after uh, Professor Dora Kunyili uh, till date. Um, I saw a couple of days ago that NAVDAQ was doing virtual screening of, um, of uh, uh, business places, and I, I'm not sure how that would work. You know, if you if you want to do a virtual assessment of a new business, I don't think that's really really um, possible. Uh, the, the part that got to me here was the speed. It might in today's terms, the yeah. speed of the um, court process that brought about the conviction of two staff of the um, organization, the pharmaceutical company. Uh, let me see if I get the name now. Barewa Pharmaceuticals, they were the producers of the contaminated uh, My Pekin mixture, teaching mixture. Um, they, they, they were, today we're talking about it was, was today that it was officially reported that the pharmaceutical company has been shut down um, by NAVDAG. And unfortunately, as, as at February um, 6, we heard 111 children were infected, and on February 16, 2019, at least 84 of them were confirmed dead. Two men, like I mentioned, Abiodun Adeyemo and Ebele Erumusele, who were employees of the company that made the toxic syrup, um, were found guilty by a court 
um, sentenced, and that company is non-existent. Their assets were seized and uh, distributed. Um, while no other known uh, debts related to my Pekin um, is has been announced, the Times reported that that particular um, um, chemical. Let me see if I can pronounce it now. Diethylene glycol. Yep. Um, it is found in coolants for. Let me see if I can find uh, that. It was used for engine coolant and antifreeze, and it can cause damage to the heart, kidneys, and nervous system. Uh, the intriguing thing here is it's not. This has not happened only in Nigeria. There is a report that 365 people died. Um, from a cough syrup that was imported from China uh, to Panama uh, from that same singular uh, chemical. We also know that the intoxication from this um, diethylene glycol um, led in part to the creation of the uh, US FDA, that's United States Food and Drug Administration, after a manufacturer used it as a solvent in an elixir in 1937. Um, we understand from history that 105 people died as a result of the contamination. So, again, it comes back to what you were saying about due diligence, mm -hmm. more responsibility in screening, um, you know, some of these drugs before they go out there. And then cutting yes. corners. Um, we, we know that the reason why, um, as at the time, from the reports that we've seen, um, these people went and sourced that chemical illegally because the NAVDA was clamping down on certain importation um, at the time. So it, again, what are the things that we should put restriction on importation? Do we need this thing? Because if people cannot get it legitimately, they sometimes go the wrong um, route. And I mean, we saw what happened. So yep. yeah, that's what sad story uh, that we um, had today in history. Um, Nigeria lost 84 children. Who knows? Could One even be more, could actually. Have been, yes, it, it is. It could actually be more. Yeah. So that, that, at least that's what the record yes. um, shows at the moment. Who knows what these children could have been. May their souls continue to rest in peace. That's uh, all we have. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.